The Agriculture Reform, Food, and Jobs Act of 2012, which the presiding officer from New Jersey just spoke of, is called, in my state, called the Farm Bill, represents the most significant reform of U.S. agriculture in decades. It's the product of months of policy discussion and late-night deliberations guided by Chairwoman Stabenow and Ranking Member Roberts. It's a reason why people across the country, farmers and business owners and faith leaders and county commissioners are paying attention. The bill benefits all of us, all Americans. One in seven jobs in Ohio is related to food and agriculture industry. To get the economy back on track, the Farm Bill must remain a priority in Congress. The Agriculture Committee's work to craft a Farm Bill that is forward-looking and realistic. The centerpiece of the bill's deficit reduction efforts is based on a bill I authored with my colleague John Thune, a Republican from South Dakota, along with Senators Durbin, a Democrat from Illinois, and Luger, a Republican from Indiana. Our aggregate risk and revenue management program proposed streamlining and making more market-oriented the farm safety net. The era of direct payments, the billions of dollars that newspaper editorial writers and constituents alike complain about, these huge farm subsidies that went mostly to large corporate farmers, the era of direct payments made annually regardless of need under this bill is over. Instead, the new ag risk coverage will, program will work hand in hand with crop insurance to provide farmers the tools needed to manage risk, making payments only when farmers need them most. The program's market oriented. It relies on current data instead of arbitrary numbers in statute. It's more responsive to farmers' needs and more responsible to taxpayers. The bill reforms a number of longstanding unjustifiable practices. For the first time, this farm bill ends payments to landowners who have nothing to do with farm management. It ends payments to millionaires. It puts a firm cap on how much support any farmer, any farmer can receive from the direct farm support programs every year. Common sense reforms that ensure the taxpayer dollars go only where they're needed. Is there more to be done to make sure taxpayers get the most efficient, effective, and affordable farm policy possible? Of course there is. In the coming years, we'll continue to improve our farm and food policy, but this is a good start. It's good for farmers, good for taxpayers, continues to move our nation's food and ag policy in a, in a positive direction. The Farm Bill is a jobs and innovation bill. Every $1 billion in exports supports 8,400 American jobs that cannot be shipped overseas, according to the USDA. In 2011, U.S. Ag enjoyed a trade surplus of $42 billion. $42 billion we sold more than we bought from abroad in farm products, the highest annual surplus on record. Contrast that with the billions and billions, tens of billions, hundreds of billions of dollars in trade deficit we have in manufacturing in other parts of our economy. There's, there's so much room for growth, not only overseas, but also at home. Bio-based manufacturing, renewable energy are two examples of the potential that American ag holds for U.S. economic growth and for job creation. Farm-based and renewable energy production, such as advanced biomass energy, can serve as the engine of the rural economy for decades to come. Its investments in agriculture like this like the ones this bill maintains in research and energy and bio-based products and food production that will enable continued creation of good paying jobs, again, that won't be shipped, that can't be shipped overseas. The Farm Bill provides economic relief to millions of Americans. While we call it a Farm Bill, this bill is fundamentally an economic relief bill. For farmers, the bill provides financial assistance to weather tough times, to adopt conservation practices that protect clean water and healthy soils and wildlife, ha life, wildlife habitat. For millions of Americans, this bill helps put dinner on the table when wages are tight and families are struggling to make ends meet and keep children from going hungry. That's why this bill is so important. I would add the presiding officer from New Jersey has always been such a strong advocate of these nutrition programs. We both understand that more than a third of people who are getting uh, SNAP, who are receiving what we used to call food stamps, are working families, people who are only making nine or 10 or $11 an hour, sometimes in two jobs, still can't make it without some food assistance. The bill includes resources for SNAP, the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, which is one of the nation's most essential anti-poverty programs. In addition to supporting people who are struggling to feed their families, SNAP supports retailers and businesses and the farmers and ranchers who grow the food. 
At a time of high unemployment, SNAP participation now is, exceeds 44 million children, uh, Americans, half of whom are children. Many of them working, many of these families are working families. Half of the people served by SNAP are children. SNAP participation is expected to fall as the economy recovers. The bill continues to support SNAP with, with minimal modifications. Continues and increases support for commodity distribution to food banks at a time when food pantry shelves across Ohio and the nation are bare. But I want to be clear, I have serious concerns with the cuts. They're not large cuts like the House Agriculture Committee wants to do and that Senator Paul tried to do very unsuccessfully here, and that Congressman Ryan, with his, uh, with his budget from the House of Representatives, nothing even close to the tens and tens and tens of billions of dollars they want to cut from, from nutrition. But I'm concerned about this $4, billion, this $4 billion cut. When compared to the $130 billion in cuts to the SNAP program in the Ryan budget, the modification of this bill was done carefully. So the farm bill is a deficit reduction bill, a jobs bill, and an economic relief bill. It affects every American every day. I commend, again, Chair, Chairwoman Stabenow and Ranking Member Roberts. Their joint effort to work across party lines is to be commended. These months of work and deliberation are at risk today because some insist on debating dozens of unrelated amendments and others seek to score political points at the expense of American families and at the expense of American farmers. This is not the time to debate conceal and carry laws or American aid to Pakistan or the future of the Labor Relations Board. Not that any of those aren't debatable, that any of those aren't um, a place where people can have reasonable differences on public policy, but conceal and carry American aid to Pakistan, the future of the Labor Relations Board should not be part of the Farm Bill. I urge my colleagues to work together and halt the impasse that keeps us from making progress on this bill. Uh, Mr. President, I, as, the, as, as a, a member of the Senate Agriculture Committee, I'm the first Ohio Senator on the Agriculture Committee in 40 years. This I was, got on this committee, it, uh, I requested a Senator Reid in my first month in the Senate to join the Agriculture Committee, along with other duties, because of the importance to agriculture in my state. One out of seven jobs in Ohio is related to agriculture. It's the largest business, largest industry in my state. It matters so much to Ohio. My position on the Agriculture Committee has helped as I've done roundtables around Ohio and met with literally hundreds of farmers, uh, grain farmers, dairy farmers, specialty crop farmers, nursery farmers, tree farmers, experts at Ohio State and the Ag School, and come prepared to help to write this farm bill both back in 2007 and this year. This is a major step forward. It's something we can be proud of, Mr. President.